Get ready for the truth. Are you one of those people that feel stuck in a dead-end job, spinning your wheels but going nowhere in life? That could be because you're lying to yourself. But fear no more, everyone. Help is on the way right here on tonight's Voice of Reason. Hi, everybody. I'm Larry Kane. I'd like to welcome Teresa Moore Griffin. She's an executive coach and personal growth expert. Teresa recently founded an organization known as Spirit of Purpose. And her book, Lies That Limit, Uncovering the Truth of Who You Really Are, will be published this summer. I want to find out who I am. We also have <laughs> Maureen Boyle, who works with her, joining us for this discussion. She's a core energetics practitioner. And welcome to George James. He's a staff therapist from the Council for Relationships in Philadelphia. Teresa, some people may be watching. This may really hit home. They're saying to themselves, I'm really unhappy. I don't like my job. I have to have the job. What do they do? You know, I think those are just all stories we tell ourselves, and they do keep us stuck in a vicious cycle. Yeah, well, here's lie number three. No one is hiring, so why shouldn't I, why should I bother looking? Is there, now, you know, that's an interesting point. If you listen to media and you look at the unemployment rate, which is 9% or so, depending upon who you talk to, mm -hmm. might be higher in the Philadelphia area, um, it, does your particular situation apply to the unemployment rate? People will say, well, it's hard, to, it's hard to find a job, unemployment rate's high. Does it affect everybody? Interesting point, because in some fields it might not. In some fields it might not, and for some people it doesn't. You know, even in the Great Depression, there were certain people who had work, and others didn't. So I think that one of the things that we have to do is to never, ever give up. I was listening to a person last night um, who was counseling someone, and that was the advice they gave, is when you make a plan, you implement your plan fully. So if you set a goal to go find a job, implement all parts of the plan, not 50% or 60%, but the full 100%. Because there are opportunities out there, if you're flexible enough, to begin to redefine some of how you approach No question the about situation. that. But what fascinates me about the whole scenario of where you work, where you work is only part of your life. It's, you know, one third of your life, for the most part, unless you're working crazy hours like a few of us do here and there. Uh, how critical is the relationship between where you work and how you live? It, you, and know, you know a lot about that because you spend right. a lot of time counseling people. You know, uh, even with that last point that I was thinking about is that, you know, a lot of people lose their job or feel like there are no jobs out there. They get depressed. They get, uh, uh, they sabotage themselves. And so now there are other areas of their life, their friendships. They're not trying to hang out with their friends anymore. They're not connecting with their family members anymore. So now they're just totally isolated because they feel depressed because they feel like there are no, no jobs out there, there are no opportunities for me. And they're afraid to discuss their situation. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. But Twitter and Facebook can't really, no matter how popular they are, right. they cannot substitute for person-to-person -person relationships. And right. a lot of people think they really are. Right. I, I agree. Think that's a problem in our high-tech society? Well, yeah, a lot of people want to be able to, to use uh, quick measures to work, uh, work through their problems. Like, even though, you know, some of the, the things that you're mentioning, they're not quick. You know, they're, they're truthful, they're to the point, but they take some time, and the person has to really go through that process. You know, one of the things I was also thinking about is what you see where another population, where you see that, is with the youth. Where they feel like, well, no one's hiring me, so I shouldn't even try. Mm -hmm. And so now they start off on a bad track record and now have to work through a lot just to overcome it. How how important are parents uh, to this kind of situation? You find a lot of young people are coming out of college and get a great college education. They can't find the, the gigs they want, uh, the jobs they want. Uh, parents either on, are in three categories. Keep looking for what you want, go out there and make <laughs> money, or you're not doing well. You know, you're, you're a slug, you're sitting around. <laughs> you know, parents can be tough. Mm -hmm. That's a big deal, isn't yeah. it? I was lucky to have the parents that were like, go find what you want. Um, but there was still the guilt of, you know, they helped me pay for this education. I owe them, you know, to get a job and to be successful. And, you know, to then after graduating say, hey, now I want to go for my master's in something completely different, invest more money on the chance that I may be able to create my own business. You know, that was scary. And for me, I, like I said, I was really lucky to have their support, and I think that made a big difference. Also scary is the fact that more and more the U.S. government is saying, as the Labor Department census, that more and more young people are living more and more years 
at home with their parents. Uh, personally, uh, somebody who's had children, you know, come out of college, I enjoyed that, that time with them. But some people, they, they want the kids out, and for good reason sometimes. This is a very, very large subject of, uh, of uh, fi uh, friction, mm -hmm. and you have to be careful of that. Because it can force you into something you don't want to do. That's right. That's, I came from the family where work was no choice. You had to go because there weren't the resources to sustain you and sustain the rest of the family. One quick question before the break. Yeah. If you're not getting the job that you want, is it better to go into something that is totally different than what you wanted? Maybe uh, working in the restaurant trade or hospitality trade uh, or something that's different until you can find what you want. I think there's never anything wrong with having a job for pocket money or to help you pay your bills while you search for the thing that is right for you. We'll be right back with a look at unhappy jobs, happier futures, hopefully, after this break on Voice of Reason.